All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so my name is Jenny Brinkley, as you might have heard over the loudspeaker. Uh, thanks for being here in the room with us and for those watching on the live stream. So this is a very unusual reinforced talk, especially when we're usually sharing tips and tricks and educational information of how to operate more securely on AWS and as you're working with your different partners. In this session, we're gonna talk about you as security practitioners. And we're gonna dig in a little bit about how we think about it and how we work through it and some of the things that we do internally inside of AWS, which also makes it very unusual, but I am absolutely thrilled about who my co-presenter is. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Mia Farrington and I am a senior HR leader. I have been supporting the AWS security organization for about seven and a half years. So I was just extremely excited to come on today and to talk about a topic that I think is kind of like we hear more and more about it. And so just a few things before we kind of go in and, and dive into the topic. The things that you will learn from today's session that we hope that you take some nuggets away are discover new ways to engage your teams and create those safe spaces. We believe that when you create those safe spaces, people come to work and they do their best work. Um, the other thing is develop new ways to build career paths for not only your teams, but also you. Um, gain insights into protecting yourselves. I think in the last two and a half years, we have all like understood the importance of, of protecting yourself, protecting your time, energy, all of those things. So we'll dive into that a bit. Um, we will also speak about some recommendations on developing security talent and things that Jenny and I have been involved in and things happening around the organization. All right. So many of us have probably flown here. I know one of the first things that, the, that they tell us in the briefing is to put on your own max oxygen mask first. And so I will ask everybody watching, listening, put on your own oxygen mask first. I know why I did that. That was awkward. Oh, I felt like we should have had. Uh, I think some, some drop from the sky. Uh, so full disclosure, I met Mia six and a half years ago when I joined AWS through uh, acquisition. I was part of a startup. We sold our company to AWS. I had a ton of fear, uncertainty, and doubt on how this individual with all these feelings and emotions and how I would operate in this giant company that didn't seem like it would be my jam. And Mia showed up. And we started working together and I started realizing that it really does take a lot of different backgrounds and perspectives uh, to be able to solve some of our most complex business challenges. So I always have to give her props for what she did for me. And when we really started thinking about why we wanted to do this talk, we started thinking about security mindfulness. I'm like, okay, well, what does that really mean? And so some people will think about it as you're gonna put security mindfulness as you build your products from the very beginning before you build, before any line of code is written, how do the business and how do security partner and work together? But there's a very in interesting component that fits in that mix. Those security humans that actually go and help and give advice and guide as we ship and build. So as we wanted to really think about this, it kind of started building out into a lot of different areas where we started thinking through the impacts of our individuals that are building and creating our services. You know, how do they prioritize and think about their day? And how are they really setting themselves up to be successful? So this talk is really, again, for you, security practitioners. How are you setting your time? How are you prioritizing? How are you helping yourself? And how are you staying so you don't burn out? Things that we don't talk a lot about. We talk a lot about it internally inside of AWS, but we thought it would be a great time to talk about this as a community because we've had a very unusual past two and a half years. I'm not gonna say unprecedented, even though I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think um, the one thing we all know, your job is hard. Um, being in HR, I hear it all the time. I think the thing that we've learned over the last two and a half years is that a job that was already very hard got even harder. Um, and so I remember like it was yesterday, though it was not like yesterday, going home, like hearing about this virus that was going around and going home and thinking, oh, this is awesome. I got like two to three weeks to like sit at home, kind of like dive in, catch up on some things that are happening and then go back and then like a month hit and then another month hit and then I'm not gonna take us all down that path because we all know what happened from there. 
Um, but it really changed how we like dive in and how we think about things. And then like your hours start getting longer and increasing. And so one of the things that I found interesting, especially um, just working in a business that I went into the office Monday through Friday and all of a sudden um, I was working from home. And then now we are kind of in this space of where we are kind of navigating when do I go in? What are the types of engagements that I enjoy? And so um, a recent study um, in an article that I saw on ZDNet, 94% of organizations have implemented a hybrid working structure, which had you told me that prior to all of this, I'd have been like, what? And then of those organizations, 60% are investing more in security controls. Like we're all home, things have to happen. I, I just think about all of the hard work that I saw internally to make sure that we could go home operate effectively, do so in a secure manner, um, but also take care of, our, of ourselves as, as people. And so um, I just want to just make sure that we like, acknowledge that the job is hard. And where we are now, things have changed and it has made it a bit harder. All right, another stat here, and this is for all of the um, security folks here. So on average, a study on Tessian said that security leaders have worked 11 extra hours per week. And then one in 10 leaders have worked an extra 24 hours per week. And so like just thinking about your own schedules and, and, and what you do, like what has your schedule turned into in 2020, 2021, 2022? I know for myself, um, working from home has been just an interesting shift from going into not having to think about the drive into the work, the, the commute and into work. And so one of the things that I, I, I speak to my own team about and speak to leaders about is being very intentional about setting your boundaries um, and being very good about saying no, but saying no and actually like following up on that. And I think that that is okay. Uh, I think it's okay for you to say no to certain things and establish what those boundaries are. They look different. Um, I know for myself, I'll just kind of share my own kind of personal like anecdote of that I had to do about a year or so in, um, I carve out time in, in the morning. So I wake up in the morning, I am going to work out some mornings, not every morning. Um, I definitely eat breakfast. I never ate breakfast before. Coffee was breakfast and then apparently like there's food and stuff that you can do. Um, I listen to, to a podcast to kind of start my day off right. And that is how I intentionally start my day every single day, Monday through Friday. Every single day. Every single day. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. There's a bowl of oatmeal Monday through Friday. That's pretty good. Every day. All right. So it is something that I have had to intentionally do to make sure that I can bring my best self to work um, and make sure that I'm able to like perform in the way that I want mm. to um, like perform. But for me, establishing a routine was just super, super important to me. Any tips and tricks on how to do that? Be intentional. Set your boundaries. Um, if you are someone, you know your own personal schedule, I block my calendar on certain days after a certain time because I know that I've got things that I need to take care of outside of work. I think the other thing that is super unique now is in the professional environment, we always used to be like there's work and home, and you only talk about work in a professional setting and you don't talk about the other space. Well, we're kind of working in our homes, and so like now you see people's backgrounds, you see all the things happening, and so you have to... You, like, we have to bring all those things in. Like all of those things make up who we are as individuals. And so just, I, again, it's just being intentional about my bowl of oatmeal. I like morning, it. Monday through Friday. Your bowl of oatmeal. On a Friday, oatmeal. Yeah. Oatmeal. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have a lot of questions about this bowl of oatmeal. Um, okay. So Mia's referenced the demands. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we actually found in some research that kind of quantifies maybe what you're feeling. And I was kind of blown away by this statistic and shout out to the folks at uh, Checkpoint Software that ran this research. But if you think about that 50% increase per week versus 2020 <laughs> over security events, I, I know it's been uh, a challenge for our teams. I, I see it, I mean, within our work and what we do in education and awareness and partnership to be able to really give our builders better visibility into different tooling and resources available to them. We get to work on the kind of the, the, I kind of talk about walking in the light. Like I get to work in the areas where it's a magical, wonderful day and everything's working fantastically well. And then I see what happens when an event occurs. 
I see all hands on deck. I see everyone getting together, supporting each other, which within our culture, within AWS, I really celebrate. And the fact that I've been six and a half years, feels like it's been a minute, but it also feels like 60 years. <laughs> uh, but it really goes back to that culture of how we try to support one another. And you know, coming up through this conversation, we just want to share some of the different things that we're seeing. We also are in security because we actually care about people. We care about protecting them. We care about their intellectual property. We're mission driven. We're curious about how things work. You know, there's a reason why a lot of people got into this industry. I see a couple of my colleagues over here to the right, my right. And I know why they're here. And it's because ultimately they want to create the safest space and the safest environments for how our builders and our services ship, um, but also ensure that people are protected. So let's talk a little bit about some of those things. But before we do. Yeah, I think I kind of um, spoke about it a little bit. And I just want to reiterate it. Give yourself grace. Um, we have, again, we're talking a lot about the last two and a half years. And that's just the pandemic aspect. Everybody here has a personal life, things that are happening within that life, and those events that have happened on top of the last two and a half years that is still happening. Um, and so one of the things, like, you will have days that, like, they just may not be awesome days. And that is OK. I think it is, like, understanding, recognizing when you have those days. And we'll talk a little bit more about, like, kind of the spaces that and people that you should kind of bring in and how you operate with like with your teams. But like, give yourself some grace, you are human. Um, what I respect a ton about the security professionals that I have an opportunity to work with is, it is a fast moving job where there's always something going on. There's always some sort of fire to put out. It feels very similar to what I do. Um, but you've gotta be able to come into that role and bring your best self mm -hmm. to exercise the high judgment. And so when you have the moments or if you, if you have the moments or you feel it, acknowledge that. If you see it happening with teams, like coworkers, direct reports, acknowledge it. Just, just giving yourself the grace to know, like, I'm human. Things have gotten a little bit, they're a little bit different than what they used to be, um, but I'm, I'm working through it. I'm navigating it and then finding and celebrating those, those wins. Like, when we were talking about this today, too, it's like this sense of things are dynamic. <laughs> So things are evolving, things are changing, things are happening, and how you decide to show up with it, but then also give yourself a chance to just take a beat and breathe and realize it's been a lot and it's been heavy. So let's talk about things of what you can do. All right. Um, <clears throat> so this is one, I think I often hear people and I am not like I am not the expert, but I will share a little bit about like what we do. Um, uh, one of the things that we mention often at Amazon is mental models. What's the mental model for this? What's the mental model for that? Um, but I like to like when I think about prioritizing things. So of all the things that are coming in that we're facing, when I when I look at it, I simplify it for myself. I think about glass balls, rubber balls. If I drop glass, what happens to it? It's going to break. It's going to shatter, and that is not great. If it is a rubber one, it is something that is going to go, it is going to bounce, it is going to come back up. And so as I'm eating my oatmeal <laughs> in the morning. On a Friday morning. And I think about my day. Eating oatmeal, anyway. No, I do. But I think about my day and like, okay, these are, these are all the meetings that I have. These are all the things that have to happen. Um, or, oh my, oh my goodness, this thing is, is, is a conflict or this thing kind of came in. How do I work through it and how do I prioritize it and how should I think about it? Um, and for me, I like guess very simplistic of just, is this something that can wait until tomorrow or, or next week? And how do I set that expectation with, with, with my customers? I try to do the same thing as I'm partnering with different leaders. Like, let's think about it in that way of like, what can I drop? What can drop? And then if it does, how are we going to work through that? And that's actually advice Mia gave me probably five years ago. And I use it all the time when I'm talking to different teams inside of Amazon, because you can imagine as the way we've scaled and the way we've grown, so much of the information and how we share with it are these little nuggets and moments. And that's something I really appreciate with how she has partnered with our organization. Because I'm sure you're also like standing there and it's like, HR and this close in the business. This is like the weirdest talk ever. And also, I'm so pumped y'all are here hanging with us for this, because I know it's very different. 
But I really want to be able to stress, if you don't have these relationships with your business partners, if you're not working with different individuals within your organizations of where you operate today, you got to find someone like Mia. You've got to find these individuals that are going to give you some perspective. And this idea of glass balls and rubber balls is a really interesting me mental model that I've used and I propagate with anyone that I will share to be and understand, hey, things are going to slip and how are you going to set that expectation and understanding? So anyway, that's my plug for partner with HR. They're really good friends. <laughs> okay. Um, I want everybody to take out your phone. We're going to do kind of an interesting little exercise. And for those that are already on your phones, stay on your phones. <laughs> it's all good. I'd probably be reading TMZ right now. Um, so go look at your sent files. And I want you to look at how would you engage when you sent that email. And the reason why I'm asking you this, when Mia and I were working on this talk and kind of thinking about the things we wanted to share, I actually got a pretty tough communication from somebody, someone I hadn't talked to in six months that just like went right in for the ask. No, hello. No, how are you? No, how's your day? Just like boom, 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 boom. And it was one of those moments where I'm reading, the, reading this email and I'm like, me and I were like, oh, security mindfulness, oh my gosh, we're all good friends, let's say. Like. And I'm like, unbelievable. And so we're like, oh my gosh, we should do this as an exercise in the talk. Because then I started to go and look at my sent emails, I was just as guilty. I would just go and respond to things, or just, not even respond to things, but make requests without even like acknowledging, what up, hi. And then I started thinking about the fact that I wasn't having hallway conversations. I, I didn't really have that right to just be so demanding. And I try to be hyper-inclusive in how I'm working and communicating to really, again, kind of create these safe spaces for people to feel that they can ask me really hard questions or... Anyway, go there. Okay, as you look through your emails, show of hands for who's here that I can kind of see. Are you saying hi? Are you saying hello? Good morning. Morning. Okay. All right. So start practicing it. I also want you to look at your slacks, chimes, other ways that you're communicating with your fellow coworkers. Take a look and see what you're saying. Just a little exercise. It's these little things, though, that add up. We like to talk about paper cuts at Amazon. That is now a paper cut that I'm going to be applying into the way I operate and show up for my colleagues and for my team. So... It's, Had to share. Yeah, and it's it's just about the culture that you are creating within your spaces, um, and it's something so simple. And and as as Jenny said, gone are the days that we are bumping into each other in the yeah. hallway, and you like you know, good morning. Oh my goodness, traffic was was crazy, or whatever the case may be. You just don't have that same ability to connect with everyone. Like some of us are in the office all the time, but you're I'm not connecting with the same people that I did. Um, I don't have that like same relationship. I'm not as familiar. And so it goes a long way, a long way just to say hello and then go in, into the ask. Yeah. Like we're here to get stuff done. We're all very, like I mentioned, we're, we're very busy. There's likely a fire tip to put out, but acknowledge and greet the person on the other end of that. Like you never know what kind of day somebody's having. And so you never know what that hello or that thank you does for someone's day. And it takes us how many seconds to type yeah. that? Well, and think about this with the security event. So if you have that rapport, how much easier is it to let them know, hey, I need your attention on this. I need you engaged. I need your help. It's these, you're earning that trust, like little minute moment element. So think of it that way. Again, these are like such basic tips, but we wanted to be able to share kind of what we're doing and what we're trying to practice. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Mia's in charge of the clicker. I know. <laughs> All right, a little more on caring for yourself, because remember, you have your oxygen mask on. We've not assisted others yet. Um, I had the benefit last week of attending a summit, um, an internal summit called Shine. And one of the things that we spent a good amount of time talking about was like that, that self-assessment. And so thinking through situations that you've been in, in your personal life, your professional life, whatever the case may be, that um, they may have tested you, or they may have been things that you thought, oh, if that ever happened to me, I would never. Um, but thinking through, how do you define yourself? 
And so the reason why I bring this up here is like in this talk, we're talking about like psychological safety, those like building these like really healthy cultures. What is your self-assessment of yourself? Have you done a self-assessment of who you are and how would you define yourself? I would say for all of us, um, resilient comes to mind for everybody here, but like how do you define yourself? Um, and what are those things? And remembering what those are as you deal with those big events that happen and being able to push and power through those things. And so again, like as Jenny said, like these are very like basic tips, but things that we should just, what did I say earlier? Be intentional, mm -hmm. carve out the time to do that assessment of yourself. We already do our own like assessments where we're like, you know, with our performance as, as professionals, but how would you also kind of rate yourself just as an individual of the things that you have experienced in your own individual lives um, and going through them? Do you add anything to this? I think the biggest thing I would add, kind of going back to where we were seeing the increase of security events, it's not going to get easier. I don't know why I just whispered that. That was weird. But it's not going to get easier. So you've got to make sure you're taking care of yourselves. And I can't encourage people to do that more often. I completely, and I'll admit, over the COVID height of the pandemic, I thought it'd be a great idea to pick up cold water surfing. Don't know why, kind of got this itch. My husband believes I'm completely having a midlife crisis. But there I was, getting myself into a wetsuit, hilarious, and then pouring and putting, pouring myself, putting myself out into the water. And what was interesting about it, it gives me this perspective and this break to start really thinking about what matters to me, what do I care about, who do I want to show up as while I'm at work, who do I want to show up in terms of the individuals and the teams I work with. My bot, and I'm going to name drop for a hot minute, my boss is Steve Schmidt, so I, I report to Steve. And when Steve got notified that he was going to become the chief security officer of Amazon, I remember he called me, and I was terrified. I was like, good luck to you. Enjoy. And he's like, oh, no, 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 you're coming. I was like, what? And what I appreciated about that moment, too, is because I've been taking these breaks and because I've had these moments of being out in the water and getting this perspective, I've been having all these really awesome conversations with Steve in terms of how are we taking care of our people? How are we taking care of our teams? How are we thinking about the types of resources and upskilling and education to make Amazon be a destination where people want to grow and develop their careers? And so not only were we going to be able to do that and what we had been doing in AWS, but then take it to the bigger environment. And having those moments to, to put myself first have been really helpful. I'll admit, I'm still terrible about it. Like I've, I over-index, I get myself involved into way too many things and I really need to start pulling back and I'm gonna use these self-assessment assessment moments to check in again. But in security, it's really easy for us to be like, oh no, I got this, oh no, let me do it, oh, let me take this, oh, I got this, no, I, let me. We have to learn how to stop. I just need to spend more time surfing maybe. I don't know. Do it. Okay. Anyway. The other thing about caring for yourself, and I think this is something um, that is relevant for ourselves, even though we're not talking about others, our teams as well, continuing education. And it can be formal. It can be informal. But I think the process of always pushing ourselves to just learn something new. Um, I, I would say, like, for this particular one, like, what type of programs exist within your own, like, other organizations? Um, what type of programs are people, are your colleagues like working on? Like what are things that you can get yourself into um, doing that self-assessment? Like what are your strengths? Like are there other things that I can kind of leverage and push on that um, a little bit? But those types of programs are always um, good and effective. Um, the other one is accountability um, <laughs> and holding each other accountable. And so, as I said, I, I've been with this organization for um, a number of years. I work with Jenny, I and obviously um, many other other leaders, and I'm a very opinionated lady. Huh? I am, what? Um, love to tell people, I love to hold people accountable. It's like, terrifying sometimes because you're just you don't want to disappoint Mia. <laughs> so you, you like show up in these one-on-ones like, I got it, and she'll be like, Well, actually, what about this, 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 and this? And you're like, oh man, yeah. It and it is. I mean, and and things perfect example of something that I do often for leaders. Um when are you taking time off? Like, what are you gonna be doing? How are you modeling those behaviors for everybody else? I saw that you sent this email. It's not what we should be doing. And then I realized like, oh, I didn't book a vacation for the summer. <laughs> like, oops. So all that time of like holding others accountable, also having others around 
to hold me accountable. And I think um, I, I want to pause for a moment. And like we, we talked about psychological safety. Psychological safety for me is being able to speak up and hold Jenny accountable or vice versa and know that there's no repercussions. No these, judgment. Uh, yeah, like it, it may be a learning opportunity for both of us. Um, we're not going to get it right each time, but that's the environment that we're in and it's the environment that we're going to continue to push and build. Um, but one of the things is like hold, we have to hold each other accountable um, when we see things, things as simple as the hello in the email. If you're not seeing, because I know that everybody here now is going to start saying hi and 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 hello, and um, many of you were already doing it. Um, but even just holding people accountable for it, like if you see if you see people doing things that are not what we want to see, say something. There's no point for Jenny and I to go behind the scenes and say, well, they really. <laughs> really shouldn't have done that. It, it doesn't help the other person. And so in building those spaces um, and for the leaders, like you have an opportunity to create that space for the team, for all of the security professionals that are working around you. Uh, uh -huh. Burnout. Burnout. Um, the other thing for all of us, self-included, is recognizing what burnout is. Um, and so... We really wanted to, to talk a little bit, to kind of pause a little bit on this burnout piece because some of the signs of burnout look like signs of like people that are either like disinterested or you'll see um, people that are not saying hello in the email and maybe they are not the kindest people that you are, are, are dealing with. But as, as, as people, understanding what that looks like, if the behavior is different, are you finding that you're going to work and instead of being like having that like critical eye, you become very cynical? Um, or you're finding that in your engagements with your like coworkers, customers, partners, you're just a little more abrasive than you used to be. Um, and oftentimes people are like, oh, I'm just tired. I'm sorry I had a, had a bad day. But sometimes those are signs of burnout. Um, and just kind of knowing what that is. I, I also say too, like on the space of as a leader, sometimes with like performance management, seeing certain things happen with, with someone, if, if things start to dip, if our performance starts to dip as an individual, being able to take that step back and understand what, like, what's happening here, how do I, how do I work through this, what is causing this, um, and then, like, how do I work through it? I, I think I've seen it more and more, um, seen it throughout my career, frankly, but in the like, last like, two and a half years where it feels like everything accelerated, in, like two and a half years felt like five, maybe more, for some of you, it just um, understanding what that looks like, holding each other accountable for it. And I think those are the moments where, because we will do those self-assessments, recognizing I can get through this. Yeah. Like I, I got this, I, I know, I know who, who, who I have around me, I know what my resources are, I know how to work through this sort of thing. It's just, it's super critical. Yeah, and I think also, we haven't said this maybe, I maybe mean, we did at the top, but, you know, there, there's been a lot more conversation about the normalization of mental health and how you apply that within your day, how you show up with your family, your friends, your coworkers, your colleagues, your teams, whoever it is, your customers, how you are taking care of here and here is huge. And we work in very dynamic times in terms of how we're managing different geopolitical events to maybe, and I don't have kids, so I always think it's odd when I talk about children, but when I talk about my friends that have kids, like I can't imagine what it's like right now for them as they're working and getting them into school and, and that safety question comes into play and then they're in security and they're like, okay, here are all the things I can do and the things I should be keeping them safe. And it's just check in with it and be cool with it and be okay with it. And if you're not okay with it, there's so many incredible resources of who you can go and talk to. But again, as security practitioners and individuals that are in an industry that is burning hot, you have to ensure that you are putting yourself first and taking care of yourself. So you can show up and do all the things as to why you're in a security role. Anyway. All right, I know we're gonna actually get into like the Mayo definition of burnout and we're gonna over index on this for a hot minute um, because here's some good questions for you to kind of think about when you are personally sitting here, maybe watching on the live stream on how you're kind of processing on burnout space. Yeah, and I think we said like the cynical versus critical. 
Um, I think the, the other thing is like concentration. Like, are you finding it difficult to concentrate? You've been looking at the same email like, like response for the last like 30 minutes and you're like, okay, is this the right response? Is this kind of what we're doing? Are you feeling disillusioned about your job? Like, are you finding that like your appetite is different? You're using, like you're eating more, you're eating less. Um, are you f having issues just feeling productive? And then if you are, what are you doing? Like, like what are you doing for yourself? Um, we talked about giving yourself grace. I think acknowledging and knowing what those things are um, and how you see them. I've, I'll, I'll use a, my own like kind of personal um, I I example. I have certainly had days where I realize, like, I love my role. I love working with people. I love working with people. I love helping people navigate challenges. I love being able to interact with people that think different than me. The beauty of being a business partner is you work with, I work with a lot of very technical people, um, but being able to come to the table and learn from them and feel like we all kind of, everybody's got an equal voice and space in that room. Um, but I definitely have days where I'm like, I, don't, I just am not feeling it today. Um, and when I have those days, I have to acknowledge it. And personally for me, I have had a day or two in the last two and a half years where like you start the day and then you get to that point where you're like, you know, I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it for the rest of the day. I'm going to let, let, let those around me know what's going on. But I think just taking that step back and feeling okay to do it, um, is, is always best for me, um, in doing it. And then if, I think for if you know for the leaders in the room, if you see this with individuals working with you or for you, helping them get to that as well. It's not always the easy thing to be like, oh, I'm going to call it. Good day, everyone. <laughs> um, heading home, but help people get to that. Let people know that like it's cool. It's safe to do that. It's like we're human. It happens. We talked about prioritizing things. Like you have to prioritize yourself as well. Um, and if there's things going on, things that you all are working that are critical, let's step through those and figure out how we get them done. But help, like helping yourselves navigate it and protecting yourself from it is only going to make you a better person to protect the others around you as well. I love that. Oh, I like talking about this. My hype team. Okay, so one of the big things that I've done over the past couple of years is I actually go and find people that will just bring me joy and give me hype. Tell me I'm doing a good job. Tell me I'm smart. Tell me, wow, that thing that you did two days ago really helped me do X. I described this in a meeting, I don't know, a couple months ago, and someone then described it to me almost as like having your own board of directors. And so for those of you, maybe you're in startup or if you do work with your board in a larger organization, those are the people that are going to hold you accountable to different things you need to be working on or obviously in giving you audit feedback. So kind of think about it from that level too. But that's also really helped me as I've been navigating on those really tough days of just those people that can build me up and, and give me that moment to be like, I am good. Damn, I know how to do this. Like, it's okay. Like when we decided to do this talk. And I started talking to different people. Okay, we're going to do a very unusual talk at Reinforce. What do you think? And I was getting a reaction of, hey, I, th I think the time's right. Let's, like, let's try it. Let's experiment, which is also one of the things I really appreciate about Amazon is, is we like to iterate. We like to experiment. We like to try things. It could be an epic failure, or it could be some magical component that we take and then figure out ways to scale and make some of these different types of topics um, saying so. Build your hype team, get your board of directors, these people that can help you navigate. It's probably like my big thing that I've been really focused on over these past few months. All right. So everyone, we have put our own oxygen mask on. <laughs> and then assist others. So again, we, we can't do anything for anybody else until we have taken care of ourselves. And so we will kind of move into um, how do you help your team? Um, so, team connections, that, that could mean um, a lot of different things. And so, I mentioned the stat earlier about the number of organizations that are now like in some sort of hybrid model. Um, some home, some coming in the office, a mix of all of those things. How are you connecting with teams? And I think the better question is, how does your team want to mm. connect? Like, for ourselves, has anybody asked me, like, hey, like, what types of engagements are best? What types of things do you want to do in person or if in person at all? But like, 
what are the best types of engagements for your teams? Um, some teams I know for myself, the first offsite I had after all of this like very interesting time, I forgot how much I miss people. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, people like real live figures that are not like, a, like flat on the screen and we're collaborating and working together and then the amount of stuff that I got done, that's what brought me joy. That was something that was helpful for me. And so when I have those types of engagements, I, I'm, I'm happy about it, but I also, I have to ask everybody around me, like, what, what are you comfortable with? Like, what do you like to do? What's meaningful to you? What makes the most sense? Um, but we've, you, you've got to figure out the ways to connect with your teams. And like I said, it doesn't have to be like face-to-face, -face, but figure out what that looks like for your teams. Like I mentioned, gone are the days where we're just focusing on the like work life and I can't ask you anything else that's going on. People have lives. But figure out what works best, what time works best, what type of interaction works best. Find out how to connect with your teams. You've got to get people collaborating and working and, and all of those things that kind of... It, it's going to help like retain your employees, trust me. <laughs> True story. And then just going to touch on that concept of how you can think about experimentation and the different ways that you're connecting, but then also in some of the work. So I'm super lucky in my job. I get to work on a lot of different topics and issues and uh, needs on how we're upskilling and educating a, a wide swath population, both internally and externally at Amazon. So I really will encourage the individuals I get to engage with to go and try, to go and experiment. I got your back. I'm here to help you. You know, in security, we talk about being the department of yes. If you go and look at the Amazon wiki for security, um, we talk about this maximum yesness concept because we really want to be able to demonstrate, you know what, you might try something, it could be an epic failure, but you know what, we're going to be here to support each other and here's all the ways that we're going to do it. And I'm going to ensure that I'm going to give you not only the air cover, but I'm also going to give you the space to be able to think through the different ideas of what you want to go and try and do. So try that sometime. Even if you're not a people manager, if you're mentoring people or if you're working with someone on some kind of absolutely bodacious idea, I just said bodacious idea, um, give them that safety and that space to let them know, we're going to try some stuff. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, go and find people that think big, that dare greatly, that really have that kind of attitude and can push people to think really differently because that's another component of how I think as us as security professionals are going to want to stay in this industry. We are going to have to evolve in how we work. We're going to have to evolve in how we partner. We're going to have to bring in emotion, you know, emotional intelligence on how we're handling a lot of the different challenges that are facing our teams because things are straight up weird and messy and hard and beautiful all at the same time. And that's like one of the biggest reasons of why I stay in security because I get to solve these different problems and challenges where you're working on something where you're trying to educate an entire population about the basics around security awareness to a situation where you're working with maybe a security event and you're engaging with a security researcher community and you're trying to figure out the best way to get information out to inform uh, customers about what's happening. So what are the different ways you can do it? And emotions are high and how do you manage it? So anyway, experiment, experiment, experiment. If you are not comfortable doing it, I will give you advice. I'm, so, I'm not kidding. Okay. The next thing is recognition. I mean, studies have shown for years that employees that feel recognized find that they're adding value are employees that stay around and they are happy. Something that a leader that I worked for once did that I thought, I, I, I loved it, I had, hadn't seen it. It was in starting working and asking every single employee, how do you like to, like, how do you like to be recognized? Mm. Do you want it in public? Do you like it um, like privately? Do you not need it at all? Do you need it here and there? Um, understanding from your teams what they need and what the individual needs is super important because you often like, you have some people that don't want it in public. Like I'm very uncomfortable when you do it. I do not feel safe when you do that. But if you don't, find out like how do you like to be recognized? What does that look like for you? Is it um, often like, Whatever it is, find out. Do not do this as a cookie cutter. It's not a one size fits all. 
and it's different for everyone. But the teams that are more engaged um, and are more high performing are the teams like where the employees feel like recognized, they feel valued, they they understand um, the impact that they are making, and they want to continue to do more of it. And then really quickly on career development, you know, at Amazon, we really encourage each other. We own our own careers. Asterix. You need individuals around you that are also going to help and seek out those opportunities. You as leaders or high-performing individuals in your security organizations, maybe you got invited to a meeting where you're going to be meeting with your CEO. Who could you take to that meeting with you? And not just bring them along to shadow you, but how do you make something really impactful for them to be there and to learn? Because our jobs, as you know, kind of have a talent shortage. <laughs> And we have got to figure out ways of how we're encouraging and building stages for others to do their best work. And it's little things. Maybe it's giving somebody a shout out in a meeting. Maybe it's giving somebody some opportunity or increasing that scope of what they're working on today. But for everyone that's here and for everyone that's watching and for future views of this, think about those ways that you create that space, those create those moments. We're kind of at that stage where we need to be doing more of it and being really intentional about how we do it. All right, I think um, one of the things that, like with all of the things that, that we're talking about, um, I love this, this statement of like progress over perfection. You, you're not gonna get it right every single time. Um, one of the things like all of us should ask ourselves is, like leaving this is what am I doing to like take care of myself? But how am I also creating spaces for the individuals who work with me to feel safe? But then the other piece of that is how do I know that it's working? Like, have I done that like step back of, oh, I'm doing these things and they're really magical and wonderful. Is it working? Are people like receiving that? Are you feeling like, are, are you feeling energized about the work that, that you're doing? But know that you're not always going to get it right. Um, you may get it wrong. You may go back into your spaces and decide that you're going to recognize everybody every single day, and then somebody's going to be real uncomfortable, and then you'll, you'll you'll take a step back. But it's it's better to try these things. It's better to be intentional about them than to do nothing at all. And so just know that um, this is hard work. Um, just all of us like working on ourselves, but working on our teams. It is hard work. We are not looking for perfection, but we are looking to try and to make progress on these things. Yeah. And I guess, you know, we're, we're kind of nearing the end of our experimental talk. We'd be very curious to get feedback of what y'all thought about it, but I will leave you with this. You know, a couple weeks ago, I did not think I would be writing an email to my team talking about a Supreme Court ruling in the United States regarding Roe v. Wade. Didn't think I'd be doing it. If you had told me two years ago, hey, guess what, Jenny, you're gonna write this email and you're gonna let everybody know, hey, here's where we're at, let's all respect each other. I would have never in eight million years would have thought I'd be doing something like that. So again, when I talk about the complexity of the times that we're living in and how we manage and how we show up and how we support each other, we have to be intentional and mindful and thoughtful and partner with people like your HR business partners or whomever some of those advocates can be internally to give you that feedback. Because thinking about retention, thinking about the kind of place where people want to work, I want to work with people that acknowledge me and see me and respect me, and I know that my colleagues feel the same way. People don't want to show up and feel like, well, I don't know, I guess I could go work here, I could go work there, I can go work anywhere. It's like you want to think about the evolution of where your career is going to go, and so much of that is about, is this the right place for me? And so much of that is about, okay, well, who's around me that is creating that space? But until you can actually do those things, you got to really be thinking about how you're putting yourself first when we talk about this mindfulness. So, yeah. And some of this may be uncomfortable, but it's all about getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think I've, I've said it several times. I say it often with the people that I work with. I have so much respect for what you all do as security practitioners. You cannot do your best work if you cannot bring your best self, if you do not create those safe spaces um, for people to come and just rock it. And so um, hopefully you, you, you picked up a nugget or something that you will do um, in your day to day or you all will share with one another. That's another thing, like please share things that, that you are doing because um, we're all in this thing together. Exactly. So again, I wanna just thank everybody for being here today. This is a highly unusual reinforced talk to get, dedicate this much time 
uh, to a topic that I think is, is so timely. But I appreciate everybody. Um, fill out the survey. We want to hear feedback. Maybe you loved it. Maybe you're like, I don't know. We'll see if we could do some more things. But um, thanks again. And enjoy your time in re in, at Reinforce. For those that are here in Boston, for those on the live stream, thanks for tuning in. Mia, thank you for doing this. Yes. It was really fun. And uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Take care.